untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white token tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and the deck features a ton of new cards from Kaldheim and there's a few I want to highlight before taking a look at the rest of the deck. One of them is Asika's Chariot and another is a battle for Bretagard who will start with a 3 mana rare saga that on the first chapter creates a 1-1 white human warrior creature token, on the second chapter it creates a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token and on the third and final chapter, we choose any number of artifact tokens and or creature tokens we control with different names and for each one of them we create a token that's a copy of it. So traditionally green-white tokens is a deck that wants to make a bunch of small creature tokens and then enhance them somehow with an anthem effect or some sort of effect that boosts up our power and toughness. Instead this green-white tokens deck operates a little bit differently if we want to build around battle for Bretagard. Instead what we want to focus on is having as many differently named tokens in the deck as possible and this deck certainly delivers. The saga itself makes a human warrior and an elf warrior token. We've got gilded goose that makes a food token which we can also copy since we can copy artifact tokens as well. Usher of the Fallen makes more human warriors. At 2 mana we've got Angelic Ascension which is also a very important card in the deck making a 4-4 flying angel token. We've got Clarion Spirit making 1-1 spirit tokens with flying. Then at 3 mana we've got Lovestruck Beast which makes a 1-1 regular white human creature token. We've got the first Iron Games which makes a 1-1 white human soldier creature token which is different from a 1-1 human and a 1-1 human warrior token. And on the final chapter also makes a gold token which we can sacrifice to add one man of any color. And then at 4 mana we've got Elspeth making more human soldier tokens, as well as Isika's chariot making 2-2 cat tokens, and topping off her curve, two copies of Emiria's Call making 4-4 angel warrior creature tokens, which are different from the 4-4 angels that Angelic Ascension generates, and even have two copies of Castle Ardenvale to make more 1-1 humans, the same as a Lovestruck Beast. So we've got a ton of different tokens that Battle for Bretagard can copy on the final chapter, so that's what the deck is really focusing on. Then we already mentioned Isika's Chariot, a 4 mana 4-4 four four legendary artifact vehicle that when it enters a battlefield creates 2-2-2 two, two, two green cat creature tokens and whenever Isika's Chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control so we can make more cat tokens if that's the only thing going on but of course the token we're most interested in copying are going to be the 4-4 four four angel tokens from Angelic Ascension or from Emiria's Call and the crew cost is only 4 so we can crew it with the 2 cat tokens we get from the Chariot or we can easily crew it with let's say a 5-5 lobster beast and the chariot being an artifact vehicle also helps us play around sweeper effects since the chariot will survive those and then we can easily repopulate the board by copying more tokens and then taking a look at the rest of the deck at one mana we've got usher of the fallen one mana two one spirit warrior with boast for one and white creating a one one white human warrior creature token so this can also generate an army by itself We've got Gilded Goose, a 1 mana 2 flying bird that generates a food token when it enters a battlefield. Can make more food tokens for 1 and a green by tapping the goose, or we can tap the goose and sacrifice a food token to add 1 mana of any color, so that can help us ramp into our many 3 drops ahead of schedule. Although the card we're most interested in cheating out early is Asika's Chariot, since that can generate a ton of value over time. And then of course the food token can also be doubled up with our battle for Bretagard. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Angelic Ascension, an instant that exiles target creature or planeswalker and its controller creates a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. So in this deck we're mostly interested in using Angelic Ascension on our own creatures. We can easily upgrade a 1-1 token into a 4-4 angel or maybe use it on a gilded goose after we've already used our food token. And then once we have a 4-4 angel we can start doubling it using our battle for Bretagard and a Seeker's Chariot so the 4-4 angel is incredibly valuable. Then we can every now and then also use it on the opponent's creature or planeswalker. Let's say they have an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, and they're about to minus X. We can turn it into an angel in response to the minus X ability and then Ugin will also exile itself after it's turned into a 4-4 angel so we don't have to deal with the angel token afterwards. Then we also have the full playset of Clarion Spirit, a 2 mana 2-2 spirit, saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, which is also especially valuable as it gives us another evasive token we can copy. And Clarion Spirit is also quite synergistic in our deck, since we have a ton of 1-drops between Usher of the Fallen, Gilded Goose, and the 1-mana adventure on Lovestruck Beast, and then the extra mana that Gilded Goose provides, and even the gold token we get from the first Iron Games makes it easier to double spell in later turns. 
Then we've got two copies of Kambira Takedown, which we can play as a tap land if needed, or as an instant, saying it deals damage equal to the number of creatures we control to target creature or planeswalker, so a nice removal spell in a tokens deck. Then at 3 mana we've covered Battle for Bretagard. We've got the first Aruan Games as another saga with 4 chapters. On the first one we make a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. On the second chapter we put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature we control. On the third chapter if we control a creature with power 4 or greater we get to draw 2 cards. And on the final chapter we get a gold token which can generate additional mana. So the most important part about the first Aruan Games is making sure we get to draw those 2 cards on the third chapter. And of course we can get there just by having our token survive after putting three counters on it, but we also have additional insurance here with creatures like Lobster Beast, a nice 5-5 five five that will typically stick around, and we even have Orisika's Chariot that we can crew in response to the third chapter to make sure we get to draw those two cards. And then we mentioned Lobster Beast a few times, the powerful adventure creature from Throne of Eldraine can first make a 1-1 one, one white human creature token with Heart's Desire, and then a 3 mana 5-5 five five that can't attack unless we control a 1-1 one, one creature, and there's no shortage of 1-1 one, one creatures in this deck. Then at 4 mana we also have 2 copies of Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, which is our Planeswalker of choice since we can also escape it out of the graveyard, so it shines against the various mill strategies, can make 2 human soldier tokens with the minus 2 ability, and the minus 1 can also enhance our creatures. Other Planeswalkers worth considering, a Garruk at 4 mana can make 3-3 three, three beasts, and we've got Vivian at 5 mana also making 3-3 three, three beasts with various abilities, although the downside is that we don't have a ton of creatures to go with Vivian to necessarily use the other abilities to our full extent. And then we've got two copies of Emeria Skull as another curve topper that can also be played as an untapped land at the cost of three life. And then two copies of Castle Ardenville as another mana sink alongside six basic planes, eight forests, four of the green white pathway, and just two copies of Fabled Passage since we don't want too many tap lands in this deck since we mostly want to be curving out until turn four. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn one Usher, turn two, we've got a couple of options, maybe Heart's Desire a second Usher before firing off Angelic Ascension. Facing a Yurion deck with turn one Snow-Covered Swamp. And they see Gas Chariot, also an exciting pickup here. Eliminate deals with Usher. And then next turn we can just play the beasts into a turn 4 chariot and then maybe ascension before we get to double our token. So they are indeed black white. Golden Egg, so probably a Doom Foretold deck. We get to attack and play Beast. And then if they were to play Doom Foretold, we can sacrifice Usher of the Fallen. So Beast can still attack for 5. Alright, Heartless Act deals with Beast. So they are full on Esper and a Maze Mind Tomb. Clarion Spirit is interesting, so I could go Spirit plus Angelic Ascension. It's a little weak to a Sweeper effect, so I think I still prefer Chariot. And I'll fetch to thin out the deck a bit. And then next turn we can go Spirit plus Ascension. Now, of course, we would prefer to keep our board intact, so we don't have to ascension on our own Clarion Spirit to crew the Chariot, but that is a play we can make. And we would still get a 1-1 Spirit token in that case. Opponent's playing an awful lot of colorless lands for a 3-color deck. 
But I guess Field of Ruin eventually fixes your mana. Golden Egg also helps. So we see a Solemn Simulacrum, fetch a land. And we get to untap another Chariot. So yeah, I think we stick to the plan. Spirits, then Ascension, the 1-1 one, one token. And we get to crew the Chariot too with a 4-4 four, four Angel. Attack with everyone, I'm fine if the Usher trades at this point, since we've got plenty of stuff to sacrifice to Doom Foretold. So if the opponent doesn't have a Sweeper to deal with my board, they're gonna be in trouble, and even if they do, still have a follow-up Chariot to crew the first one. Cling to Dust, Exile's Beast, do gain 3 life. That's fine. A Chum Block with Simulacrum does sort of imply that a Sweeper is incoming, as opposed to trading for the Usher of the Fallen here. And then, should I play Pathway? Can't think of too many cards that make me discard one that the opponent is likely to have. I don't think they're playing kind of the... Two mana creatures that discard one card. Seems like they've got a different build. Tome is gonna scry. So that also implies they haven't found their sweeper yet. Elspeth's Nightmare can take out... Clarion Spirit here, presumably. That's fine. Can make sure to play Chariot before the second chapter, just to make the two tokens. Although, if our opponent doesn't have anything else, even if they gain 3 up to 14, they seem that to me. Murder Strider as a blocker. Is that gonna cut it? Chump Chariot... I don't think so. Since we can crew Chariot by playing another one. Make sure to keep the original so it can attack right away. And we can even boast with Usher here if we wanted to. Alright, sweet. So managed to defeat Asper, Doom Foretold. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with fine opening hand. Turn 1 Goose enabling 3 drop on turn 2. And since we have Ascension, I don't mind turn 1 Goose, turn 2 Battle. And eventually copy our 4 for Angel. And then Clarion Spirit pairs nicely with the 1 mana Adventure. On turn 3, perhaps. Let's see what we're up against. Some sort of Sultai deck. So ideally, we can pick up an extra land here. If not, I guess we'll just Ascension next turn already, maybe on the Gilded Goose. Opponent foretells a card. Alright, so Spirit plus make two tokens here essentially. And then next turn, before the third chapter happens, we want to Ascension. Not sure what the foretold card could be here in these exact colors. Unlikely to be a Doom Scar, at least. Although there's some white mana. Another card being foretold. And then, do I want to use it on Goose or a token? I guess we'll just use it on the Goose here since we're kind of all in. Alright. 
So that's a nice mix of tokens to double here on turn four. And then I could Ascension again to trigger Clarion Spirits. I mean, I don't think we're beating a Sweeper next turn, so might as well. It's an impressive board state. Let's hope it stays that way. There's not much they can have besides a Sweeper to keep them alive. All right, four mana, opponent lets us untap, and we're gonna attack. Don't know if two spot removal spells on the angels do it. So there's Heartless Act number one. And eliminates. And our opponent's still dead. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent looking hand. Won't be able to play Ascension turn 2 on our own creature yet, but we can combo it nicely with Battle for Bredegard. Fetch up a Plains in case we draw a Shrove of the Fallen. So we can play turn two. Facing a woodland chasm, black green snow maybe. So not the fastest start, but luckily being on the play makes up for it. Thing going battle, and then turn four chariot, turn five, I guess now Clarion Spirit plus Ascension looks good. Although, Chariot also combos nicely with the first our own games, as it will give us a 4-4. So definitely an interesting choice here. But let's go for battle. That's going to set up the most impactful doubling of angels. So now by playing Chariot, our opponent can't really attack with... God of Winter, unless they've got instant speed removal for Chariot. And then... I guess we will miss out on the Spirit token here if we want to get an extra Angel token, since we'll have to cast Ascension before the third chapter. But that's okay. Can just go Ascension plus Iron games instead. So if God of Winter attacks, it probably implies instant speed removal for Chariot. Opponent gonna float some mana. So I don't have to animate my chariot here if I don't want to. Or the opponent just really badly wanted to double their mana. This could be like a soul shatter they want to cast to deal with the chariot. In which case I also don't really want to crew it. So could just like block God of Winter with our tokens instead of with a chariot. Now, they had a Murder Strider. So now if they also have a second Murder Strider or Soul Shatter, crewing chariot would not be great. Otherwise, you know, we can still be okay here. Just double blocking God of Winter. Yeah. Um, I think we're just gonna let this go. On the one hand, we kind of force the issue if we double block, because then they'll kill one of the tokens, and then I can still Ascension. So maybe that's actually better here. Make them tap out to save God of Winter. And then we'll get three Angels next turn. So yeah, there's a Murder Strider. And then we get to do this. Get an extra angel and crew. So this would not have worked if our opponent had instant speed removal available. 
because then they would have just killed whatever I tried to target with Ascension. So we had to make some sacrifices, but I think it worked out in the end. And then time for the Aron games to commence. Plenty of 4 force to block God of Winter. And our opponent explodes, so yeah. Just uh, carefully planning around the opponent's in speed removal to not put our chariot in harm's way, and then Angelic Ascension for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one goose into maybe a turn two battle for Bradagard or turn two Lovestruck Beast. Battle for Bradagard doesn't have any amazing tokens to copy, it's just gonna be a bunch of 1 1s. So I'm kind of liking turn 2 Beast more here to apply more pressure. Could also just go Usher plus Adventure and save the token for later. That could also be reasonable. And then hope to draw like a chariot next turn. Opponent also on green white, and there's chariot. Perfect. So we get to attack. Play chariots. And that can apply a ton of pressure here. Can crew it with a lost rock beast if we want. Opponent on Naya. And a skewed swarm, so opponent's gonna be ramping and making a bunch of tokens themselves. Our own games also not a bad one. So what if we play our own games to get to the card draw ability sooner? And then I can crew by tapping the token and these two. And playing the beast is also not going to be great in the face of Scoot Swarm making 1-1 shun blockers anyway. So I would rather go wide. Tank like this, make another cat. A nice nickname for Isika's chariot is the Cadillac. Could see a ramp spell here, fetch up a couple more lands. And yeah, eventually Skewed Swarm's gonna go wider than the token deck. Alright, I see Great Horn, so our opponent's gonna mutate onto the swarm to eventually start doubling the amount of Great Horns they have. Elspeth. So we'll put three counters on... Could put it on the Goose to have an evasive attacker, which I don't hate. And then we'll still have Chariot to draw cards. Because, yeah, the ground is probably going to get pretty stalled starting from next turn. So I could see putting more power in the Flyer being relevant. So let's do that. And then for now, play a battle for Bredagard. Crew chariots, like so. I guess we'll crew with a human token instead of the soldier, since we have more ways to make soldiers here. And then attack. Make another cat. And then next turn I'll have to put a stop to make sure we crew the chariot before the third chapter. points at two, so now the goose should be able to get across the finish line. Elspeth could also give it two additional power, so a lot of ways we can do it. Vivian Monsters Advocates, all right. That can make a reach token to block the goose, although they still seem to be in trouble here. Crew Chariots, one, two, three. Or, I guess, crew with Usher. There we go. And then... An embarrassment of riches here. But I guess just playing Elspeth is good enough. Alright, sweet. 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Good beast to provide another four-powered creature for our own games. And then turn one, I guess we'll play Usher. Could also play differently where we keep our one drops to go with Clarion Spirit, but we've got a lot of three drops, so Clarion Spirit is probably going to be a turn four play in this hand. And then I would rather just deal more damage with Usher in the meantime. On to inversion, so our opponent could have a sweeper heavy deck, which doesn't bode well for our creature deck here. Yeah, I guess we can just play Spirit turn 2 now. Turn 3, play our own games, take it from there. Otherwise, we could have boasted to keep some cards in hand to play around the sweeper effect. Black White. Eliminates Usher. Maybe they want us to overextend here. Yeah, let's play our own games. And then next turn I can Adventure plus play Beast, which also triggers Clarion Spirit. Ray down. Alright. So, counters on the token, I believe. And then... Token can attack. And this way, even if they kill my... 4-4 four, four will still have a 4-powered creature for the third chapter. And then double ascension hopefully can help us close out the game. Conquer's death on the beast instead of the saga. That's fine. And we'll take two. Alright, we are flooding a little bit, but luckily we have Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink. So I can attack with everyone, and then double ascension before damage. I assume they block Clarion Spirit, so I can ascension a token, probably the 1-1. One one. And then ascension Clarion Spirit, which will still trigger it. Opponents at 7, and gotta hope there's no sweeper in our future. Sky Nomads can flicker Conqueror's Death, that's fine. So then now I have a 4 5 blocker for my angels. And another Ascension. So I can Ascension Yorion before blockers attack with all, and then they go block, block, take six. Or I can attack with everyone, and then Ascension my own token. Is it better? That seems worse than just using Ascension on Yorion. So we'll just use Ascension on Yorion. Opponent has to jump with Raidan. And trade, fall to one. And at one life, Castle Ardenvale is incredibly threatening. Allurus doesn't have anything to get back, and the angels can get across the finish line. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with, once again, turn one Gilded Goose. I'm not going to complain. So this looks great. Turn two Battle for Bradagard, Angelic Ascension, 
to go with it. And take it from there. Opponent also on green white. And a stone coil for one. Sure. Now Chariot is tempting, so I could wait to try and play Chariot first, but I think this is more of a Battle for Bredegard type of game. Luminarch Aspirants, or opponent a plus one plus one counter deck, presumably. So, I could try and set up an ambush with Angelic Ascension here, since I don't expect my opponent to play around it. And then for now just Heart's Desire and pass. Opponent maybe thinks we're going to make a food token. Could have maybe attacked for one, but also want to preserve my tokens for the third chapter. Crystal and Giants, that's fine. And we'll see if they want to attack. I guess upside of attacking is that we would not have three toughness back on defense, which makes it more likely that the opponent attacks with a stone coil. But that worked out. And then I think we say goodbye to Gilded Goose. Perfect, we get to play Chariot. And attack with our Angel. And our opponent explodes, already way too far behind. So we got to see the potential that this green-white tokens deck has. And most of it relies on Angelic Ascension, plus either Chariot or Battle for Bredegard to copy those early 4 for Angel tokens. Without Angelic Ascension, the deck can go wide, but it maybe lacks a little bit of punch. So who knows, maybe in one of the next expansions we'll get another powerful token maker like Angelic Ascension that can make a large token for a cheap cost, in which case this deck could become a tier 1 competitive deck. Until then, it probably lacks a few pieces to make it compete with some of the stronger standard decks out there, but undoubtedly capable of doing some cool things. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.